Hello and welcome to New Planet School. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Mac Grapher, and in particular, I'm going to focus on how to make 3D graphs. So, just to remind you, if you haven't seen the other videos, how to get into Grapher, you have to be on a Mac, and you find it by going into Applications, Utilities, and there it is down there. And if you double click on that, a window like this will come up. And what we're going to do in this video is look at what happens when you select 3D graph. And when you do that, a box like this will come up and it'll give you some different options. And they look like this. Here's the default graph, which is just a black background. You can put a box around it. You can have the blue gradient background or just a white background. You can do cylindrical coordinate systems. You can do spherical coordinate systems. Uh, just simple black and white with a box or blank. So those are the things that you can select um, when you get in. Okay, one thing to keep in mind is the axes aren't labeled. So this one coming out towards you is X, one going off to the right is Y, and the one going up is Z. So keep that in mind because Grapher doesn't automatically label those. Okay, so let's start off by looking at point data before we get to plotting actual functions. So what you want to do there is there's two ways of doing this in Grapher. There's often many ways of doing things. You can go in the menu under equation and select new point set, or you can go to the bottom left and click on the plus sign and type new point set data. And either way, what's going to come up is a box that looks like this. And it'll have points already filled in this table. And what you want to do, those are just default points. So what you're going to want to do is just delete them by selecting them as I have here. And then say delete row and em empty those out so that you can put in your own points. Of course, if you want to look at those points, that's, that's great too. Okay, so here what I've done is I've added some of my own points up here. And you can see what they are. This one... This is, the, this is the X column, this is the Y column, and this is the Z column. So the top point here is 0, 0, 1. The second one is 2, 0, 0. And then the final one is 0, 3, 0. And then if you press OK, you'll get a graph that looks something like this. It probably won't look exactly like this, because what I did is I made these points, and then I clicked on the inspector, so that I would get the inspector box to come up and they can see that I changed them to pink boxes and so you can see how you can customize the points that way. And so if you look at the points you can see this point right here X is 0, Y is 0, and Z is 1. So this is the point 0, 0, 1. This point right here, x is 2, so this is the point 2, 0, 0, and then this is obviously 0, 3, 0. And so you can add points in, you can go back up, delete some of these rows, add more rows, and, and do um, whatever you want with that. Okay, so let's look at constants next, sort of the next, next um, most more complicated thing. When you go into the 3D mode, instead of it saying Y equals like it does with 2D, now it's going to say Z equals, and you just fill in the equation that you want. So here's some simple ones, right? I just did Z equals 3, and you get this plane right here when Z equals 3. Similarly over here, I did Y equals 3, and I get this plane right here. This is X, Z, and then you can't see the y-axis, but that this plane right here is y equals 3. And then it, here's another example where I did x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0, so that I have these planes that go through all of the axes. And you can use these for getting some orientation, and since you're looking at, at a projection in 3D, this plotting things like this can actually be useful when you have your actual curves up there. Okay, but let's look at some actual functions. So the first one I have over here is z equals sine x, and so you can see here, you get it very simple, it pops up a, a sine x curve. Um, because it doesn't depend on y, um, it's obviously constant in y. And over here, if I give a y dependence, 
with this function, so let me see, like, I'll write that out bigger in case you can't see it. x squared minus y squared over 5. Now I get something that's a little bit more complicated in the x, y, and, and z directions. And then similarly, here's another one. Let me write that bigger in case you can't see it. It's sine of x, y over 2, and you get this very interesting looking surface that looks like that. So just like in 2D, type, typing in different functions and getting a graph right away, are um, it's very easy. As with um, 2D, you can also do multiple functions. So here I've taken one of those functions that I just showed you, which is the sine of x, y over 2, and then I come down here, click on the plus to get new equation, and then I add the new equation so that it appears here, and here I'm adding this parabola, this three-dimensional parabola here, and it's added to the other curve. And as, as in 2D, you can check or uncheck these boxes if you only want to plot one of them or both of them or whatever. So pretty much the same thing as is in the 2D part of MacGrapher. Okay, interestingly, the axes are equivalent. So if you don't like the orientation, you can Take where it says z equals, and you can you can erase that and type it in yourself. And here, for example, I've done x equals sine of y, and so now I have a sine wave that's now constant in the z direction, but varies in in the y direction according to x equals sine y. I can also do y equals. So here's y equals x squared plus z squared. So now I have an x squared an x and z dependence, and I get a this parabola going off along the um, y-axis instead of the um, z-axis as we saw earlier. So keep, keep that in mind, the axes are equivalent. Okay, so of course Grapher allows you to move the graphs around. So let's plot that parabola. We can look inside of it, look down on it, see what it's shaped like. And so this is a nice feature if you're trying to understand some properties of whatever the function is that you're trying to, to plot. So here's a different one that has a different shape. You can turn it around and explore it, look from the top, you can look from the bottom, and get some nice intuition for what your graph might look like. So that's a nice convenient feature. Now what if you want to go into a different coordinate system once you're in there, you realize I you're in Cartesian coordinates, but you'd rather be in, say, cylindrical coordinates. How would you go about doing that? What you would do is you would go up into the menu bar where it says Format and select Graph Template. And this will give you the, the menu that you started with in the beginning. And now you can select, um, let's just, for, for example, select Cylindrical S System, and we can then make graphs in a cylindrical coordinate system. So here's what I've done is I've made a graph in case you can't see it it's sine of 2r divided by r z equals sine 2r over r. So now I'm in a cylindrical coordinate system so I have z here and then I have a coordinate that comes out which is r and so you can see that it's a sinusoidal and r that falls off. So very handy. Once you have that surface, you can click on it, go into the inspector, and you can customize it. So here I've selected um, a different color for it called chromatic. You can select other color options, like here I've, I've, I've chosen one called orientation and so forth. So they can be customized just like any any of the others. Okay, so here I'll show you how to do a full customization of a curve using what I call the New Planet School chair function, which I've written out over here. And this function makes something that looks like a chair. So let's let's plot that and then go through all the different customizations that we can do. So here we've selected 3D graph. We have a gradient as the background. Okay, let me stretch this to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now let's type in this chair function. Uh, oops, let me correct this. Okay, so there's our chair function. And you can see why I call it this, because it looks kind of like a chair. Now we're going to go into the inspector, and let's just walk through this 
clicking on line, you see what that does. The face, you can change the face to have a lot of different choices. That's just the uniform one. There's one that has stripes. Chromatic, we saw a little bit of that earlier. Blended, you can move it around, see what it looks like on different size. Orientation, and then height. Now height here is interesting because you see mainly that there's a lot of blues and greens, but if you click this, you get the full range. And it looks a little bit, go, oh, if you go under resolution, you can actually increase the resolution so it looks a little bit better. So that's what that is. You can make it hollow. And then those like wires that are making up the curve now, you can take this slider right here and you can make them bigger or smaller. Okay, let's turn that off. And let's add contours now. So you can add contours to the surface. Here you have these sort of yellow contours. It can change the spacing. You can make the spacing go up, make the spacing go down. And you can actually change the color of the contours. Here they kind of blend in. So I've reversed it so that the blue is on the red and the red is on the blue so they don't blend in so much. So that's another option that you can um, use. And if you go back and change the colors of the faces, the contours obviously will stay there um, as, you, as you add them. So that shows you how to make um, a function and go, go into the inspector and make lots of different um, customizations. Okay, similarly, if you're in a different coordinate system, we saw this plot earlier, same thing. You can go into the inspector and you can add contours to that surface as well. One other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is if you see a graph like this and it's it looks like you're kind of wasting a bunch of space up here and you're wasting a bunch of space up here and you want to see it better. What you want to do is you want to go under view and go under frame limits and then you can set all of the ranges of the curves and you can get something like this that fills the graph a little bit better. And so that's how you, that's how you do that. Okay, now I want to talk about something that's what I call a 2D projection. Sometimes when you're working with functions that more naturally might work in 3D, sometimes it's nice to be able to see them in 2D. And so this is a way to do that. And Grapher has a nice capability for doing this. So what you want to do to learn how to do projections is go back into 2D view mode. When you do that by going up to the menu and finding view and saying, it'll say, if you're in 3D, it'll say, switch to 2D view, and I've already done that, so I'm in 2D view. This would allow me to switch back to 3D view, but I don't want to do that. And so now that I'm in 2D view mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in an expression right here. And here I've typed in, in case it's too small, sine of xy, and I get something that looks like this. What's different about the other parts of Grapher is here I'm typing in just an expression. I'm not typing in an equation. I'm not saying z equals sine of xy, which is what I would do if I wanted to make a 3D graph. But now what I'm doing is I'm purposefully omitting this part so that I get a basically a color density graph that looks like this. Okay, so let's see what happens when we go in there. We can Go into the inspector, we can change the opacity of this, we can change the color scheme of this. That arrow circles around to the right like that. This, this just means update. So I can change the resolution, I can add contours to this. There I've added some contours to it. It's just a different way to express um, 3D graphs but doing it in a plane so that I can look down on it and see it. And you can customize it as usual as much as you want. So think about whether or not a 2D projection might actually be a little bit better for what you want than a 3D graph. There certainly each of them has has their uses. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, what I recommend you do is if you want to get some more ideas is go up to the to the menu bar, go under examples, 
and then down here are a bunch of examples for 3D and you can look at the different examples I show some of them here and give yourself some ideas of just exactly what's possible. Okay, so thank you for being here and I hope to see you back here at New Planet School very soon.